What is up guys, JF Gaming here, welcome back to my Jules Bianchi career mode and this is the one we've been waiting for, the Monaco Grand Prix and this is the track, we probably have our best memory of Jules where he scored his only points in F1 and we all remember that fantastic move, it's a, it's a legendary move, I'm gonna say that, that he pulled on Kobayashi at the uh, Raskas corner and it was just fantastic, he scored his only points, it was a great performance, there was carnage all around him but he kept his head in check and got them two points for Mana Mar uh, Marussia at the time and their Mana's only points but into qualifying I did no practice for this and around Monaco that makes things very difficult indeed and here we are coming to the line, I think we're P14 and considering before the final corner we were P10, that's a little disappointing. Didn't get great traction, but here are the results of qualifying. Hamilton takes pole from Rosberg. Hamilton, I think, has won four races in a row, so he's definitely got the edge on Rosberg. I'm down in 14th. Ooh, just missed out on 13th. Very close with Perez and Vern, but I'm pretty happy with that. We'll see what we can do from there. And teammates in 21st, pretty standard for him. On the grid, I have made the decision to start on primes. I've been saying it nearly every race, before every race this season, but I think I'm going to try it here. Um, because obviously on the first lap I'm not going to make as many positions up as I would in a normal race. And this isn't a normal race. And we're on the outside so we've got to try and get to the inside, try and make the most of the AI being slow if they are. And away we go. We don't get a great getaway on these prime tyres so could be at straight pass. We're going to the inside though. Trying to dive bomb everyone. Can we make it? Up the inside of Hulkenberg. We've kind of got to cut the corner. We were three wide there. Though Hulkenberg, oh, Perez even got a better exit up to 13th. We've gained one position, which is pretty much the best you can expect around Monte Carlo. But we're on the back of Perez. We could go for a dive bomb down here. And we've got a much better run there on these prime tyres. We're going to go for it here. Up the inside of Perez. We need to try and squeeze him out if possible. So he doesn't go for moving to the hairpin. We've gone for it on Hulkenberg. We're so close. And I can't really put my foot down. Otherwise, I'll put Hulkenberg in the wall. So I had to pretty much let him go, a bit of oversteer there, but we're solidly in 12th, pretty good start, and I've just seen a Torosso side by side with Perez behind me, yes, they're going side by side through the tunnel, and there we go, 12th position, we did lose a bit of ground on Hulkenberg there, but let's see if we can get this car into the top 10, and that's the end for this race, to emulate what Bianchi did in uh, 2014 with that ninth place, but it's going to be very tricky, unless there's a retirement or two, and we're on lap 4 here, we are dropping back from Hulkenberg, but obviously we are, we are on the prime tyre, so that's kind of expected. We've got a bit of a train behind us, um, not too many cars, the likes of Perez, Vern, but uh, I think we're doing solidly at the moment on these prime tyres. We'll put the options on later on and see if we can overtake around Monte Carlo. That's going to be the tricky thing, and we're going to have to do it to try and get into the top 10. We didn't get a bad run there, but Perez is going for the move, and he's actually easily overtaken us. We can't really fight back. We try, but we've had to cut the corner, so I'll let Perez back through. I'm not going to take an unfair advantage there. There's no point of cheating the game. Uh, yeah, Perez up to 12th. And at this point, I was thinking, how am I going to get back past Perez? Can I go for a move down here? We're not really close enough, so I was thinking undercut's the only way to go. And I was thinking, with the tyres being scaled on this game, um, how long would the options actually last? And I thought, I'd take a risk, and we'll see how that turns up later on. And at this point, we somehow get oversteer there. It felt like contact, and we didn't make contact with the barrier. Vern behind us didn't make contact, but now Vern's gone for a move into turn one. Is he going to go get it? He's going from around the outside, he's outbroken himself there I think and I heard a front wing break and yes it looks like there's a bit of a kerfuffle behind us, we'll see in the replay here. What actually happened Fern, he goes to the outside, but we clips the barrier and he's going to lose his front wing, what a disaster. That's kind of like what uh, Felipe Massa did when he crashed out, but obviously not the same impact. So lap 8, this was the time I decided I'm going to go into the pits to make our one and only pit stop, put the options on. If they go off the cliff then we're going to be ahead of the cars we need to if we can undercut them of course and yeah we're going to have to try and hold them back but I'm interested to see how long these options are going to last I if I did practice I would know this but I can't be bothered to practice and I think it's more entertaining going in there uh, with no practice as well so are we going to have a good stop yes we are can we avoid the traffic? There's a car behind us which is Marcus Ericsson in the cage room. He must have pitted quite early. So uh, we could do with coming out ahead of him. I think we're okay. 
Coming out in 19th ahead of Ericsson. There's a bit of debris there. I'm guessing that's probably Vern's front wing thinking about it. So he's not having a great uh, home Grand Prix. And we're coming down the finish line. We have taken a couple of positions from a couple of cars pitting. But this is the main lap where most of the cars around us were pitting. There's Perez. We have undercut the Force India. That's exactly what I was looking for. And it's worked perfectly up to 12th. But you can see on the mini map, we're a long way behind the top 11. So... It's going to be very tricky. We need some sort of contact ahead or some back markers. Back markers on this game, it, it just makes it hell around Monaco. But uh, yeah, it's a short race, so I'm not too sure if there'll be any back markers. But there actually was. It was John Eric Verne. And yeah, Hulkenberg's round as he was trying to lap Verne. So Verne going into the barrier has worked very well here. It's put Hulkenberg, who's done that famous back tyre clips, the. Uh, barrier on this game which is it's very easy to do around Monaco and I actually didn't do it in this race very surprised we have made a little bit of contact with the barrier there but no damage no spins so we're doing okay so lap 12 here and we're in 11th position we're gonna see what the gap is to Magnussen ahead and we, we really are pushing you can see I'm just throwing the car all over the place I've got the confidence now I've had enough practice around this track to try and catch up to Magnussen lap 17 the gaps down to 5.1 and who is that ahead of us? I think that's a back marker, so we're going to have to lap them, get them out the way, and try and pursue this McLaren. And this is just how great the back markers are in this game. Clips the inside wall. Yeah, great job. And I actually am hitting the barriers quite a bit because I'm pushing so hard. So hopefully we'll end up with no damage. But final lap now. What's the gap? It's 2.6. That's going to be so tricky. But we're going to try our best just to get a point. It would be so fitting to get a point around Monaco. But... We're coming to the end of the race and it's not looking too promising. We're pushing as hard as we can. It's down to 1.4. One more lap. That's all we needed. One more lap. We do a bit of a cheeky corner cut there. Um, I'm going to say I didn't mean to do that, but I probably did. And yeah, we're going to come up short, sadly. Hopefully, Magnussen's got a penalty. That's our only hope at this point. Bit of a disappointment, but a solid 11th position. Great race there from Jules and... He's, he's going to be happy with that, but it's a shame not to get any points. So there's the result, and wow. Hamilton has not won for the fifth time in a row, and he's actually finished fourth. That's strange, because he was in the lead around halfway through the race, so I don't know if he had any contact somewhere. So Rosberg takes the win, and he'll have the march in the uh, driver's standings. Further down, there we go. Just a second of 10th place. Slightly disappointed, but Kobe actually finished 15th actually. That'll be uh, Catron's best finish so far this season. Max finished 18th. And yeah, you, Hulkenberg actually got disqualified when he spun around. Because he actually very kindly let everyone through and got disqualified for that. So I don't get the logic there. There we are in 9th position. Uh, 14 point, points behind Mass. I'm, I don't really know where we're going to finish. Can we battle the McLarens? I'm not... Uh, too sure how this season is going to pan out. I just hope we have a few good races coming up. And as you can see, Rosberg has taken the lead in the driver standings. That Mercedes battle is going to go on for the rest of the season. And there we go. Kobe Ashi's 15th has moved him up in the driver standings. There's a construct as McLaren have overtaken us for now. So if you've enjoyed that, please leave a like, subscribe if you want to see the rest of these videos. And I'll catch you next time out. Goodbye.